that night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole, as whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, and a land flowing with milk and honey, and he will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, brothers and sisters, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Brothers and sisters, do not be afraid of them. Ladies and gentlemen, the name before us today is Caleb. No introduction necessary. But unlike the other names we have treated thus far in our series, Reflections on Biblical Names, we don't actually have a biblical account of Caleb's naming ceremony or Caleb's birth to truly grasp as to why his parents blessed him with such a name. Because the time that we are introduced to Caleb in scripture, he's already about 40 years old. According to Joshua 14, verse 7, Joshua 14, verse 7 says, actually, Caleb himself says, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. So he was already 40 years old. So unlike Samuel, unlike Perez, unlike Judah, we don't know the circumstances surrounding his birth which would have led his parents giving him the name Caleb. What we do know, however, is that Caleb lived up to his name. Caleb lived up to the meaning of his name. Living up to your name means embodying the characteristics and values associated with the meaning of your name. The Hebrew name Caleb, written with a K in Hebrew, Aleb or Caleb is a compound word made up of two words, K-A plus Lev, Lev, which means heart. Therefore, Caleb literally means all heart, which is where we get the word wholehearted from. We are told by Hebrew scholars that Kalev is also associated or derived from the same root with the Hebrew name for dog, which is Kalev, which means like heart which described the good nature of a domestic dog in relation to its loyalty, faithfulness, and unconditional love for its owner. No wonder they call a dog the man's best friend. A dog can even give up its life for its owner. So Caleb is associated with that name. Caleb means wholehearted, which also means faithful and loyal. And without a doubt from the biblical account, Caleb was all of the above unto his God, unto Yahweh. He was faithful. John 14, verse 14. John 14, verse 14 states, So Hebron had belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, ever since. Because Caleb followed the Lord, the God of Israel. Watch this, wholeheartedly. So he lived up to the meaning of his name because that's what his name meant, wholehearted. But he literally followed God wholly. We are given about three case studies in the book of Joshua to evidence this, Joshua and Numbers. The first one is Numbers 14, uh, which is well known that Caleb was one of the 12 spies entrusted by Moses in Numbers chapter 14. 
And then he was the only two that brought a good report when the rest of the 10 spies brought an evil report, which spread. And just as we read and terrified the whole nation of over 460 people, 60,000 people, if not more, just counting the men. And, and, and this evil report, no wonder the Bible called it an evil report, is so spread like wildfire. We should be careful what we hear. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This report, this evil report of the 10 spies is so much spread across the whole nation that they forgot this God who brought them out of Egypt. But Caleb was one of the two, him and Joshua, who brought back a good report, according to Numbers 14. And according to Deuteronomy 136, Deuteronomy 136, Caleb was also one of the only two adults that entered or were allowed to enter the promised land. The rest of the nation had passed because of their disobedience. They had passed in the wilderness as God promised them that since they said they cannot enter the land, they will not enter the land, even though they had changed their mind, but it was too late. But because Caleb and Joshua brought back a good report and stood for Yahweh, stood for Elohim, stood for Adonai, stood for God, they were allowed to enter. They were the only others who were allowed to enter. So by the time they went into the promised land, you know, they were everybody's parent, everybody's uncle. They were the eldest there. And we are also we also have the third case study, which is in Joshua 14, verse 12 where at 85 years old, Caleb tells Joshua, brother, give me this mountain in reference of Hebron. He said, brother, give me this mountain. Let's look at that, Joshua uh, 14, verse 12. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself had, you were there, Joshua, that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified, but the Lord helping me even at, at, at even at 85 years old, he said, but the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. He was not even scared at 85 years old. So he was faithful. He lived up to his name. However, I like to submit that Caleb's proof of faithfulness should not be limited to just the above three case studies. I'm pretty sure that you know, uh, there are many more which were not recorded there because faithfulness begins in a valley, not at the mountaintop. Faithfulness always, a proof of faithfulness always believes begins early in life. It's just that we are not privileged to know about the early life of Caleb, but I like to, to submit that Caleb must, must have proved his faithfulness way before he was called by, by Moses to represent uh, the, the other spies way before he was chosen to, to, to represent the tribe of Judah. Because Luke 16, verse 10 to 12, Luke 16, 10 to 12 tells us that if you are faithful in the little things, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly Wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? I recall in the early days of our parish, we used to rent a place at a school, which we rented for about five years. And like every church, we believed God to have our own building because at the school, our time was limited. We were only there on a Sunday and we had to put up and put things down. We enjoyed that. It was at that time, it was okay, but we longed to have our own place of fellowship or our own place of worship uh, where we will have no restrictions. We had, we had to do Bible study on different venues, etc. And one of our prayer points was lord please give us our own building give us our own church give us our own place of fellowship and one of the days the spirit of the lord laid it in my heart and i'm pretty sure it was you know the spirit of the lord because it was in line with luke 16 verse 10 to 12 i felt the spirit of the lord says 
if you are faithful with the school premises. God will honor you with your own premises. And since then, my attitude changed. I mean, we used to look after the school to the best of our ability prior to that. But once the Spirit of the Lord dropped that in my heart, you know, I went on another level. Myself and my wife went on another level. Actually, it was one of the bank holidays when I had had that. And my wife and I purposed to just spend our bank holiday on that Monday before the school resumed, just to give the school a proper cleaning. And we're doing this unto the Lord. We're doing this because he had promised if we are faithful with another man's property, he will honor us with our own. The rest is history. God has blessed us now with our own place of worship. And we attribute this to that verse, to faithfulness, being faithful in the little things. So there must have been so many opportunities where Caleb in early in his life had to prove his faithfulness before we, 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 we get to where he was 40 years old. Because faithfulness always begins in a valley, you know, in a mountaintop. Because by the time we we're introduced to him, he was already at the mountaintop of his life. I pray that you will be faithful in whatever God has entrusted in your hand. Another thing we learn here is that Caleb was even ready to die for Yahweh. He was so wholehearted, committed to the Lord, that he was ready to die for Yahweh. Numbers 14 verse 10, it tells us that the nation of Israel threatened to stone him and Joshua. So, 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 so. And that was not an empty threat because stoning people at that time was a common way of really killing people. And even as you go as far back as the New Testament, during Jesus' time, when that lady who was caught in adultery was threatened by the Pharisees to be stoned until Jesus intervened, you, know, you could tell that this was not an empty threat. That means there may have been loads of people who had been stoned. And we see this even post our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. You know, Stephen was stoned to death. So, so this was not an empty threat. When they threatened to stone Joshua and Caleb, the whole nation, based on the evil report, and they had brought a contrary report, which was in, in line with God. This was not an empty threat. But Joshua and Caleb in particular were ready to be stoned. But to keep Joshua and Caleb from being stoned, the Bible says in Numbers 14 verse 10, God's glory appeared at the tabernacle, and he threatened to destroy the whole multitude which reminds me of that Bible verse. When the enemy shall come like a flood, the master shall lift up the standard against them. Had God not intervened, them guys meant to kill Caleb and Joshua. But just like Misha, Shadrach, and Abednego being thrown in the fire, it's like Joshua and Caleb were ready to die for Yahweh. So his faithfulness also is, you know, is, is proved in that case study. And of course, the last case study in, 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 where he says, give me this mountain. In Joshua 14, 6, uh, verse 14, this, 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 this is the best one, in my opinion. Because at this time, he was already 85 years old. But he was ready to still go for God. The Bible says, Hebron therefore became an inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Because he was faithful, faithful even unto the end. It is my prayer that you and I will be faithful even unto the end. My question as I begin to round up this brief reflection on Caleb is that who are today's Caleb's? Who are the Caleb's of today? Who will dare to be faithful and wholehearted for Yahweh, even against all odds? In the 21st century, who are the Caleb's of today? Second Chronicles 16 verse 9 says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them, check this, whose heart is perfect toward him, whose heart is wholehearted toward him. This is interesting because the Bible says, the Satan also has a similar ministry. According to 1 Peter 5, verse 8, and, and Job 2, verse 2, we see that Satan has a similar ministry. His eyes goes to and fro, 
seeking whom he can devour. So when Satan enters a building, his eyes are constantly looking for the weakest link. Who can he devour? But at the same time, when God enters a building, his eyes run to and fro, looking to show, to see whose heart is wholehearted to him. Who can he use? I pray when the Lord visit your house, when the Lord visit your church, when the Lord visit uh, your vicinity, as he looks to him for, he will find you and I wholehearted towards him. And, the, and this was the case where, which, 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 which single David out of his brothers, because we are told that even Samuel was almost anointed the wrong persons twice or three times, but God kept telling him, do not look at the physical appearance because I've rejected these guys. I've considered them, but I rejected them because I do not look at the outside, but I look at the heart. So that means David's brothers were rejected based on their heart, based on the condition of their heart. And, 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 and God said, I will find a man after my own heart when he was talking concerning uh, and rejecting even Saul. So God was after a man whose heart was wholehearted towards him, even at that time. And he found David at that time. In the time of Caleb, he found Caleb. His heart was wholehearted to, 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 to him. So God's eyes are always moving to and fro to see, regardless of race, culture, background, where you are from, age. He's looking for those whose heart are holy towards him. And, and, and Caleb was a perfect example of this. Another point is that faithfulness, simply put, is taking God seriously without going into deeper uh, dictionary meanings. Faithfulness, simply put, means taking God seriously. I hope this doesn't come across as arrogant, but over the years, even as a pastor, I've stopped taking seriously anyone who doesn't take God seriously. Anyone who does not, who deliberately doesn't take God seriously. I've stopped taking such people seriously. I will do my job as a pastor. Uh, but once I discover that the person is apt or is adamant that they don't want to take God's principles seriously, I can only pray for mercy and I can only just pray for, for such people. But I stopped taking them seriously. Even some of the people around you. And, and, and of course, I don't mean this in an arrogant way. You know, I stopped I can hang around with everyone, but those that stop taking God seriously will get you in trouble because <laughs> uh, to them, God's principles are not as, uh, as, 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 as serious as, 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 as they are portrayed. So such people will get you in trouble when you associate with them or you <laughs> trust their counsel. There's a thin line, ladies and gentlemen, between ignorance, Hosea 4 verse 6, my people perish because of ignorance. There's a thin line between ignorance falling into error, you know, like, uh, for example, we see in the case of uh, the road to Damascus, where God encountered uh, Saul, whom we know as Paul, you know, who believed that he was saving God. God had to encounter him, said, no, it's me that you are persecuting. So, in the case of Saul, Paul, he had fallen into error, believing that he was saving God. That's why he was worthy of rescue. But when it comes to deliberate sin, Romans 8, Romans 6, Paul himself, who was rescued, said, shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? When it comes to deliberate sin, it means you're not taking God seriously. So, so why should God take me seriously if I don't take him seriously? Why should God take me seriously if I don't take, you know, um, his Bibles, the, his principles and his instructions seriously? I don't take things pertaining to the kingdom, things of eternal value seriously. You know, deliberate sin, like being a false prophet or, or Christian, a Christian living in adultery or living a double life. That just shows to, goes to show that that person is not taking God seriously. It is my prayer, without being arrogant, without telling off today, <laughs> that we all become faithful and faithful unto the end, like Caleb. And like the meaning of his name, Caleb, faithful. 
wholehearted lawyer and cheese master. <laughs>